Hey, what's going on, y'all? Jay from JS Films, and uh, we're going to be taking a break real quick on the metahuman stuff because I'm currently doing some scouting, some environment scouting, lighting scouting for some you know, shorts that I am planning to make. So this right here uh, is made by Leo Artis. I, it, th this caught my eye because it looks absolutely amazing. I've talked about it before, and I pretty much removed all the lighting. So I just added one light with UDS. It's just this one directional light here, uh, blasting light to this diner scene. Now, right now, this is just stock. This is what it would look like if you're using Unreal Engine 5 by default, right? It has its own denoiser, uh, stuff like that. And we have it set to nanite, so you can see all the triangles and stuff. But in the lumen scene, you'll see that, again, since we're only using lumen, um, without RTX geometry, it's just kind of guesstimating uh, the calculation. And additionally, with the reflection view, it's like, okay, yeah, I'll reflect these, whatever, right? So this is what we kind of start with. And I'll play this in editor and kind of just look around. Now, if you were to ask me, you know, people ask me all the time, like, how, do you, how, how does your stuff look so good all the time with lighting? To me... If you want something to look realistic, you have to simulate real lighting as well, right? So in the scenario like this, where it's an abandoned diner, it's not going to have any lights. It's not going to have any lights that are turned on. So really, if you were to shoot a movie like this, you would have one big light that will just simulating the sun because you wouldn't use the real sun. But in this case, we are going to use the real di directional light. And you're going to have to, like, add fill lights and stuff like that to, like, you know, bring the scene. And lighting is subjective. You can light however you want. But for me, I'm saying is I try to mimic as close to possible what it would look like in real life if I were to walk into this. Now, our eyes have eye adaptation. Pretty much it has auto exposure. So in real life, if I were to walk into this, right, it would automatically make everything bright, similar to how it's doing right now but we have insane dynamic range. So, so it would actually look really amazing and bright, but that's not really cinematic. It would look like real life. For me, you need shadows for it to look cinematic. So yeah, this looks amazing. This looks good, but it's crushing a lot of shadows. It's not going to read well if you upload it on YouTube. And for the skylight, I'm using Capture. All right, I don't use skyboxes whenever I'm doing cinematics. I'm not using HDRIs like a lot of YouTubers do. that It's just not me. I don't use that for cinematics. Uh, it's great if you're making like car commercials or whatnot. For me, I like to simulate as close as possible the environment and reflecting everything that's happening in the scene. Uh, but yeah, this is the before. And what I'll do is I will have to actually go to the uh, default engine to turn this on. So right now, you see our uh, nanite dot ray tracing is false. I have to close the project and put the CVAR in so that I can actually show it just to you with the Zora branch. Okay, so we're back in the project, and if we check our ray tracing, it's gonna be set to true. So right off the bat, what we just did here is now everything in the scene is calculated properly, all the nanite meshes and stuff like that. So if I go to nanite, if I go to lumen, lumen scene, you're gonna see that we have a lot more static mesh than we did before, because this is now using RTX geometry. Additionally, for the reflection view, it's taking into account the objects around, which should, in theory, give us proper reflections and global illumination. So, and, and just like that, you saw that it's much improved already. Um, it's, it's still crushed, which is not good, but I can see that it's, it's better, it's more solid. I can see a little bit underneath the chairs here. So if I press play here, you can kind of see it in a play mode. Oh, whenever I turn the camera, it messes up for some reason. So you see that we're getting a little bit more bounces here, right? Than before, we can actually see some part of the ceiling, even if I just leave it like this, which is great. Looks good, but that's not really going to be usable. So now what I'm going to do real quick 
is turn on ray reconstruction using a keyboard here. So I'll just go keyboard J and I'll just do like a flip flop exec. And I believe it's, I have to copy and paste this, NGX enable. All right. So this is going to be your RR. And whenever I flip flop it, I'll set this to zero. I'll set this to one. So we're going to enable ray reconstruction, basically. All right. So here it is. Right now, with our scene, I'm just kind of let it settle. And if I press J now, you can see that this is really starting to clean up the image. I mean, I'm curious about this because obviously ray reconstruction is being used. Oh, that's why I'm clipping through the floor. Uh, we're seeing a lot more ray reconstruction games now. And and I always like to see it raw in engine instead of like seeing it in the video games. With RTX geometry without changing anything else, this is starting to look pretty darn insane. All right, so here is the actual post process. And if you get the Zora branch, you also have RTX DI in direct lighting. Okay. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. RTX DI indirect lighting, if it's set to do in the indirect mode, as far as I know, again, as far as I know, I'm just kind of doing research on this. If this is set to two, this is re-steer PT. So now we're in the path tracing territory here and you can tell because of the noise right off the bat by just swapping this to Lumen, right? And then to path tracing restore PT. And now if I save this and I press play, similar to what we did, this is what the image now looks like with ray reconstruction on. All right. So here it is with re-steer PT, ray reconstruction off, re-steer PT, ray reconstruction on. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I really just wanted to see this for myself. I know they showed this in the Zora example demo, but I like to try things myself. But now with RTX geometry, re-steer PT, ray reconstruction, I didn't even turn any DLSS on frame generation under that right now in this scenario. With one directional light, this looks incredible. Let me know in the comments below what y'all think about this technology. I think it's super cool. I'm extra, I'm super curious if this is going to be implemented in the Cyberpunk 2077 Orion because that's being developed in UE5, which we saw they used RTX DI direct uh, illumination in the Cyberpunk 2077 right now. So I'm curious to know because, bro, if, if they implement this technology, RTX geometry somehow with RTX DI, indirect, indirect, and ray reconstruction, yo, that's gonna look flippin' amazing.